Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about a new topic called Introductions to Organic Chemistry. The first subtopic is Molecular and Structural Formula. Shown on the slide, the molecular formula on the left and structural formula on the right. Molecular formula tells us the type of atom's presence and its number only. So, in CH4, we could see we have one carbon and four hydrogens. Whereas the structural formula tells us how the atoms in molecular formula are arranged means by referring to what we have learned in semester 1 chemical bonding, the carbon located in group 14 period 2 in the CH4 forms the most plausible structure by having 4 CH bonds around it. Structural formula has two representations to be explained. They are expanded, condensed and skeletal. Expanded structure shows all covalent bonds between atoms, as shown example on the slide for 1-propanol and 1-propene. We could say this carbon-hydrogen bond is shown, carbon-oxygen bond is shown, oxygen-hydrogen bond is shown. As well as for the propene, the carbon and carbon double bond is shown together with the carbon-hydrogen bond is shown. Although it shows all bond presence, it does not represent the actual shape of the molecule. Next, the name of this structure itself tells us that their relative placement somehow going to be compressed. They are called condensed structure. In this structure, all single bonds between carbon-hydrogen and carbon-carbon are not shown. To show heteroatoms other than the carbon or functional groups or alkyl groups that attach to the carbon backbone we have in organic structure, it will require the use of the bracket or sometimes a single bond. If a cyclic structure is condensed, then the carbon-carbon single bond that make them cyclic need to be shown. Let's see how this expanded structure of 2-propanol is condensed. To form condensed structure, you need to first identify the hydroatoms or functional group or alkyl group that is attached to the carbon chain. In 2-propanol, we have functional group of OH. And then, we need to condense the structure by getting rid of the carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen single bond. We have few representations of 2-propanol condensed structure. First, use single bond to show the bond between carbon and OH. Second, you can also insert this OH in between the carbon backbone as long as the functional group is positioned at the same carbon as the one in expanded. In here, we have carbon number 2 and this OH is held by the carbon number 2. The third representation is kind of similar to the second one, where in here we put a bracket or the parenthesis to emphasize the branch of the OH. And then the final representation is when you further condense the structure, so we have CH3 of 2 in here by factorizing the same group that is attached to the same carbon. In the second carbon, we have CH3 and CH3, that's why we can condense them together. Lastly, skeletal structure. This structure do not show all single bonds between carbon and carbon and also carbon and hydrogen. In other words, their carbon chains are drawn in zigzag, while the carbon rings is drawn in polygons. The only element to be drawn in the structure are heteroatoms or functional groups. Shown on the slide, the expanded structure of 4-chloro, 2-methyl, 2-butene. This structure has carbon chain only, so the first step is to form skeletal structure by drawing the zigzag of carbon. Count how many carbon that forms the longest chain. In this structure, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. There you go, a zigzag containing 4 carbons. And then, you need to look up for any carbon that has branch of alkyl group. So we have alkyl group attached to carbon number 2. We also have carbon double bond carbon in between carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. Since the functional group is in between the carbon, so we simply draw another bond on top of the existing bond. And lastly, at carbon number 4, we have heteroatom of Cl. Draw a bond with chlorine to show the bonding. The second example involves heteroatoms between a carbon chain. Since the structure has carbon chain only, so zigzag of carbon will be drawn. The longest chain of carbon is made up from three carbon with nitrogen in between carbon number one and carbon number two. There you go. Our carbon number one is seen here. We have nitrogen and then carbon number two and carbon number three. And then attached to this end is alkyl group. So draw a bond pointing outwards at nitrogen. 
The last example involves ring in between the carbon chain. So polygon comprises of three carbon will be drawn like this. Attached to the carbon number one is OH functional group. So draw a bond with OH to complete the structure. Classifications of carbon atoms on the for sp3 carbon means the carbon should have four single bonds around it. So no classifications for carbon-carbon multiple bond and the class of carbon can be up to quaternary carbon. Then, the class of carbon is determined from the number of carbon attached to the desired carbon highlighted in pink. So in primary carbon, they should have one carbon attached to it. At secondary carbon, they should have two carbons attached, tertiary got three and quaternary got four. Apart from classes of carbon, you also need to know about the class of hydrogen atom. Relying on the sp3 carbon in carbon atom classes, hydrogen is classified based on the number of carbon attached to the carbon bearing the hydrogen highlighted in pink. The primary hydrogen has one carbon attached to the carbon bearing the hydrogen, while secondary hydrogen has two carbon attached to it, and lastly, the tertiary hydrogen got three carbon attached to it. So this hydrogen atom has no quaternary classes since no more available space for the carbon to occupy because we want to reserve this carbon bearing the hydrogen. Let's try to identify the primary, secondary, and tertiary hydrogen in the following alkene. So we have hydrogen highlighted in red, green, and blue. They are all belongs to different classes of hydrogen. Let's have a look at the carbon bearing the red hydrogen first. This carbon bearing the hydrogen, directly attached to it, we have only one carbon. Means all nine hydrogen highlighted in red belongs to primary hydrogen. And then for the blue one, this carbon bearing the hydrogens in blue, directly attached to it, we have two carbons. Therefore, we have two hydrogens in secondary class. And lastly, carbon bearing the hydrogen in green, one, two, and three carbons is directly attached to it. Therefore, this hydrogen belongs to tertiary hydrogen. That's all for subtopic 4.1 molecular and structural formula. Thank you.